Hey guys, welcome back. We're here at Baker's Leather Supply with uh, Aaron and we're gonna visit a little bit about sewing machines. I get a lot of questions about uh, selecting a sewing machine if it's your very first one or whatever. So we're gonna do a quick rundown on some of the machines that Leather Machine Co. offers. And Aaron, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm great morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you got pretty much every one of mach uh, the machines that Leather Machine Co. offers, don't you? We uh, we try to keep a good, good selection of them, okay. uh, at least in the showroom, even if we don't have them on hand for sale just so people can try out different ones, but we do carry the, the at least the most popular ones. Okay. So. What's your favorite machine of all the all the machines that they offer? I've told a million people that if I had to, if I could only choose one machine, mm -hmm. um, it would it would be the Class 26. It's a oh, 26. Lightweight cylinder arm machine. I, I don't do a lot of heavy, heavy stuff anymore, so it's it's a good machine for, for everything I do. Okay. So What's its max thickness that it uh, it'll go through about three eighths of an inch of leather oh, okay um, i'm basically if, if it'll clear under the needle it'll it'll sew through it okay cool deal because i've got the class four that i got from you guys a couple of years ago and i can sew what is that an inch seven Almost eight somewhere inch, yeah. right there and i haven't stuck anything in there that it won't sew yet so yeah. i've been really happy with it but i think a lot of times if you're for guys that may be sewing patches on caps or different things like that that might be an overkill on a machine but you definitely would never have to upgrade that machine i guess right. yeah all right Aaron. well let's take a look at some of the machines that you've got because i know you've got quite a few of them and other machines but we're just going to stick with sewing machines here because i know that they have a splitter and a bell skyver and stuff like that but let's look at uh, your favorite machines real quick and we'll take a look at them right on so this is the uh, this is the class twenty six. Okay. Um, it's a lightweight cylinder arm sewing machine, and I, I say lightweight. I would call it maybe even light to light to medium. Like okay. again, it'll it'll sew through about three eighths of an inch of leather. Basically, if it'll clear that needle right there, then you can sew through it. It's a, it's a great little machine. Um, it has uh, like all the others. It has a servo motor on it. It's got adjustable stitch length. It's got a reverse. It does everything that most just general leather crafters would ever need it to do. Unless you're getting into saddlery and tack and heavy holsters, things like that, this this machine will uh, fulfill the needs of, of most folks out there. Okay, so you could sew holsters on this, <laughs> anything, anything like What's the smallest thread you can run and what's the biggest thread uh, you can Down run? to about 69. Um, oh, wow. And I'm, I'm sure if uh, somebody was really good at tuning one in, they could probably get some 46 through it. Um, up to uh, 207. So, I mean, it's actually got a really wide range of That's threads. the same size thread I run in my yep. class four. Yep. I don't run much bigger than 207 um, in mine. Yep. Now, I keep I keep 138 on this one on a regular basis. So that's pretty much what I use on all my projects is 138. Right. I've been running because I'm interested in this machine because I've been running um, 92 is what I run on my little Singer machine, mm -hmm. which is, it runs a pretty stitch, but the Singer's really not designed for sewing belts the way I use it. And so I've been thinking about stepping up, and I, I, you and I had spoke, and I had spoke about the Class 20, and you said yeah. this one would be the machine to actually go with yeah. um, because of its versatility. The 138, I think, is what I, that, to me, that's a big jump from 92 to 138, but we're going to sew up some scrap before I leave because I want to try it <laughs> yeah. just to see what it would look like on my belts, and it really doesn't. I've seen you sew some since I've been here on this machine, and it doesn't look too terribly big, so... No, um, the 138s, it's a nice thread size, and like I said, I use it on almost everything. I have a lot of wallets and stuff like okay. that. All the way down to, the only time I really moved down is if I was going to do watch bands or something, you know, I'll usually move down to a, a smaller thread then. Right. This uh, machine also, for the people that sew a lot of leathers that aren't as stiff or, you know, um, shap makers, things like that, this does have the uh, the flat top. Uh, a little table. The, the little table top that you can mount okay. to, the, to the table here. And um, it's it's not huge. It's about yay big here, and um, that helps a lot when you're doing you know lots of flat sewing and mm -hmm. stuff. And so that's I, I tell people you know you can turn one of these into a flatbed type machine, but you can't take a flatbed and make it into right. a cylinder arm. And that's why I'm a, I'm a huge believer in the cylinder arm machines because the ability to sew on that curve is just right worth its weight in gold. So. Yeah, that would be one of the one of the disadvantages, I guess, with a flatbed, true flatbed, because you're not gonna be able to sew a bag unless you sew it on the other side exactly. to get on the inside of that gusset or something like exactly. that. So, Cool, well, let's check out the class four real quick. Right all right, so this machine is, ought to look pretty familiar. This is in all of my videos. This is the exact same machine I've got in my shop, uh, the class four. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, the class four is uh, a pretty versatile machine. It, it is designed more for heavy work, mm -hmm. but I know lots of people that are still doing some of the more refined work on it too. 
pretty good at uh, thread sizes, um, 138 all the way up to, I mean, whatever they make. Right. Um, I mean, I, I laugh because 346 and bigger to me, it's a climbing rope. It's oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you might as well buck stitch it. Yeah, like yeah. that stuff's huge, but this will handle it. I mean, it's got the biggest needles I've seen for it are size 27. And I mean, the, you can throw a dime through the eye of that thing. Wow. But yeah, it'll uh, it, it's it's real comfortable between six ounces and all the way up to almost an inch of leather. Yeah, um, tons of power. Even at that inch of leather, it, it's not even a power issue. It's more of a how how high will the needle come up out of the leather to right. make a next stitch. Like all the others, it does have a a, a reverse a servo motor. And uh, you can adjust your stitch length on it. For folks that maybe aren't familiar with the, the term, I keep saying servo motor. It's it's like the gas pedal in your car that when you just barely press down on the pedal, then it'll go slower. But then if you need to hammer down on it and you've got a long straight stitch to run, then um, you can you can push down all the way on the pedal and it'll go much faster uh, to whatever you have your top speed set at. So it's kind of variable variable speed. Variable speed to where you know you can kind of. Because on my Singer, it's almost off and on. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's, it's old got the old clutch motor. motor. Yeah. Yep. And so I can idle that thing along and kind of throttle it, but you've got to really, it's so sensitive. You've got to know it. Yeah. yeah. You've got to know where that point is. So yep. that's really cool. Yeah, this machine is, uh, the power on this machine, it will snap no matter what size needle you have in there. It will snap <laughs> it in half if things aren't lined up correctly. The interesting thing about this machine, I bought, the, I got the package for all the attachments and mm -hmm. everything. And it's actually it actually came with presser feet for sewing yep. blankets or pads, I yep. think is what he told me. Yep. And uh, I haven't used any of those. I don't have a, a really reason to, but all the holster plates and all that, I mean, yeah. that was, to me, when you get this machine, I've got a friend of mine that bought a machine and they were just wanting something to sew belts and do that. And he bought this machine because he said, I don't want to have to buy another one. Exactly. And so I kind of feel like this would be the machine you would recommend, which is why I was kind of surprised about the 26, but now yeah. I see why the 26, because you can almost do everything this one can. If yep. you don't plan on doing sheepskin, skirts, blankets, pads, anything really that heavy and complicated, right. there's really no need to, to there's, go this. There's really like. not. Um, you know, for years they, they referred to this as the dream machine. They still do. I mean, it's still just, you yeah. know, it's the Cadillac of sewing machines. Right. But it's just not needed. I tell people all the time, if you're pulling a lawnmower trailer, you don't need an F-350. Right. You exactly. Know? Good so. point. Yeah. Well, that looks good. Well, let's check out the flatbed that you do have, and we'll, yep. we'll look at that. All right, Aaron, so which one is this one now? This is the Class 18. 18. Um, it's it's more of what, when somebody says they have an industrial sewing machine, they're probably talking about something similar to this. It's right. got the same feed mechanisms um, as the, the larger machines down there, the cylinder arms, mm -hmm. but it is a flatbed machine. Um, so therefore, it's it's absolutely great with flat work, but if you need to sew a, a, a can koozie on the curve, you're right. not going to do it. Yeah, it really has all the same capabilities as the uh, the class 26. It'll still sew through about three eighths of an inch of leather. It's it's got a reverse. It's got you know stitch adjustment. It's got a servo motor on it. It just like I said, the main I I, I compare this one to the the 26 a lot. That mm -hmm. they are the they're almost like the same machine as far as what they can do. I mean internally, there's a lot of differences. Right. But, as far as what they can do, they're they're practically the same machine. It just this one's the flatbed and that one's the the, the cylinder arm. So if I was to, if I was because I do a lot of belts, I make mm -hmm. a lot of belts, and that's what I, I had originally looked at this one or the twenty um, as far as upgrading my singer because eventually I'm going to wear that head out. It's already kind of getting loose, and so I'm kind of abusing that machine. I need to get something a little heavier. And so looking at this, like I said, you've about got me sold on the 26 just because it would be a more versatile machine in my shop since that's not all I do. Right. But sewing, if a man did nothing but belts and wallets and flat good work, mm -hmm. this machine, he wouldn't have any issues no, with anything. No, not at all. Um, for, for the longest time, I had one of these and I had a class four. Mm -hmm. And that was that was it. Until they came out with the 26 and then I decided I liked it more. Right. But uh, when I was doing custom work for a living, these were the two machines that I ran was this and a 24. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing machine. It really is great. I just really love that cylinder arm mm -hmm. and the uh, the versatility that comes with it. And you have the option of the table with that so you can put that in there and right. you've, you're you pretty well good to go if, if you need a flat bed, if you yeah. prefer a flat Flatbed, which I've never, the only thing I've ever sewn on a flatbed is the Singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, outside of that, everything we had was a cylinder arm. I had an old Pro, uh, Ferdco Pro 440, yep. or I think it was a 440 Baby Bull or something. Mm -hmm. And it's got just a, it's a cylinder arm, but yep. it's on a, on a flatbed table, but it doesn't, it doesn't operate like one. Oh, wow. So I don't really understand the, the purpose of the flatbed versus the cylinder arm as far as like why, because if you need a cylinder arm, you have to have it. Yeah. But 
you can sew something you would traditionally sew on a flatbed, you could sew it on a cylinder arm. Right. So I'm kind of getting into your camp on that of like, there's really no need to, to, exactly. to limit yourself just to the flatbed. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's, that's why, like I said, you can, you can turn the cylinder arm into a flatbed, but you can't make a flatbed into a cylinder arm. Exactly. So why not get the best of both worlds? Cool deal. All right, Aaron. So one of the main questions that I get from a lot of people online is what sewing machine I'm, I'm new to leather work, but I've been doing it for a while. And I'm ready to get my first sewing machine. I'm tired of hand sewing and stabbing my fingers and doing all that. I get a lot of folks that are looking for a used machine. These are very hard to find used. Very. Um, I've looked online when I was looking for mine, I was kind of looking around just to see. And if you do find them, you can pretty much get a brand new one for the same price right. because they hold their value. Yep. That's one thing with sewing machines, even I've dealt in some used equipment before. And yeah. you, you're not gonna save a ton usually, you yeah. know, on depending on what it is, especially sewing machines. If a person's looking for a new sewing machine, their very first one, Seems to me like this is the one you would recommend if their budget allows. Very much so. My my big advice I can tell a lot of people, and I mean this just comes from me that I I bought a couple of machines before I got up into Cobras and right. stuff. Uh, I've got a good friend that he likes to say, "Buy once, cry once." Exactly. You know, yeah. like why buy a twelve hundred dollar machine that's mm -hmm. not going to do what you need it to do, and then it's going to be harder to sell because it won't hold its value like one of these. Right. You know, and then you've got to save up all that money again just to you know move up later. Yeah. Um, save your pennies and 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 get the one that's going to do what you need it to do. If somebody's doing leather work and they're they're doing any kind of small strap work, anything like that, and they can step up to one of these machines, this is what you would recommend if they're not if they're wanting to stay with just flat goods and not do any kind they can start out with one of the flatbed machines and the 18 would be be something better better there to start out with definitely um for a lot of flat goods and stuff like that and um like shop makers love the 18 because you know you got large pieces of uh, real malleable material that mm -hmm. you know bends easily and um so the the flatbed is is kind of the way to go if that's your specialty mm -hmm. but but yeah, I mean, it's it's an absolute great first machine until, again, that you're ready to go into the real heavy thicknesses and you decide you want to go into saddle making or something like that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a great all-around machine. Right. I, I have a lot of people call me and, you know, oh, I need a machine that does it all. I want one that goes from, you know, yeah. 69 thread all the way up to this. And uh, from this, yeah, yeah, from two ounce all the way up to an end. There's just not such thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, every serious shop you go into is going to have at least two machines. Right. And they do different things. One of them's the lightweight one, one of them's the heavyweight one. And unfortunately, that's just how it is, you right. know. And, and, and that's an, an education that a lot of people just have to get when they start looking because most folks that are starting out in leather work aren't starting out with saddles and things like that they're mm -hmm. they're going to get into the personal items and right. and learn their way around the leather work and that's why this is always the one i recommend for a for a first machine is right. uh, one of these these lighter weight ones like this one of the things that whenever people ask they're at, they're looking at used machines and you're, you're you're online and you don't really know if you've never bought a sewing machine before or haven't really had a lot of experience sewing on them you can kind of really get yourself into a pinch because you can end up with a machine that seems okay but needs a little bit of repair and that little bit of repair can be a thousand dollar baggie full of parts in a sewing machine very quickly especially a lot of the older ones uh, you just want to be real careful when you're shopping around for older machines and there's nothing wrong with that i bought honestly whenever i started leather work i i was dealing with third co at that time it was the baby bull is the one that i have i still have that machine and i bought it brand new a guy that I learned to build saddles from said kind of the same thing. You know, when you start out, if you can do it, buy a brand new machine and learn everything about that machine and you can die with that machine because you'll know it inside and out. And I can tell you from working in a shop with multiple machines in there, some of these machines become one man, op one operator machines to where whenever that one person sews on it, it sews great. Anybody else gets on it and it will bird's nest everything you try to sew. And that's just a fact. Even my old Ferd Co., the one that's been some of the older videos, the white one, that's still a good machine. She's loose and she doesn't sew always perfect, but when I sew on it, I know how to, how to operate that machine to make it sew. Anybody else in the shop that would get on it other than one other saddle maker would usually have issues with it. And so I was constantly working on that machine. And so towards the end there, it kind of got to where I just sewed everything on it. That way it would just not go down because if it went down, we were down for a couple of hours trying to get it to sew again. So if you can afford to and you and you have the, the opportunity, buy the best machine that you possibly can at that time. And if it is a flatbed, you know, if you're doing mainly wallets and belts and, and flat work, 
then the flatbed machine will be fine. Just understand that after some amount of time, you'll have to upgrade. You probably sell that machine. I guarantee you what's gonna happen though, is if you buy your first machine, whichever one you can get, if it's a 26 to 18 or somebody else's machine, that first machine you get, you'll never sell it. As long as you're continuing leather work, life changes and you get bored with it and don't continue doing leather work, you obviously will get rid of it. But if you're still doing leather work, I'm that way as far, and I know most craftsmen are, they get a machine in their shop and they don't, even though they may not use it and it sits under a sheet, they still want it so that they can use it whenever they need to. And so you'll probably, as time passes, you feel like I'd rather just keep it than try to sell it. So, but check out Leather Machine Co. And, uh, and if you're around the Waco area, definitely come by Maker's Leather Supply. He's got all these machines here. We've been playing on them for a couple of days. We just ran up here to do this little video because I had those questions about the sewing machines and I don't know enough about all the other ones. The only one I know of is the class four because that's the one I have. And so we thought we'd run up here and check it out. And, um, but if you're ever in the Waco area, stop by here. He'll let you play around and sew on all these, I'm assuming. You've yep. got all yeah. kinds of toys. We, we let people even bring their projects in and sew them up and stuff because I, I tell everybody all the time, it's, it's just going to lead to a sale down the road, you know. Yeah. When, they, when they go home and they're hand stitching again, they're yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to go get a machine. Yeah, it's hard to, <laughs> me and Aaron both agree on that. We don't hand stitch unless we absolutely have to because you've got, if you've got a machine there that does a quality stitch, there's no reason to, to do it. But I understand the hand sewing and, and um, I appreciate the hand sewing. I think everybody needs to learn how to do that. But if you're at that level where you're wanting to get a machine, come check these out. Aaron, we really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate you letting us come in here and play with leather and see Always what we can get it. done. Well, we're going to go play with some other machines now. He's got a splitter I want to try, so we're going to check that out. Thank you all very much.